like we were saying last week, the opening was, you know, eh, like 75% there. This was a little cleaner. First off, still the same turn and shoot. It was not Connery, once again, which yeah. was odd. It still is stunt double, and it was the same one. They didn't reshoot it or anything. So with this, we had Gun Barrel, but it had the Bond theme right away, into the prologue, and then the title sequence. So it's like we're getting a step closer, but the title sequence still didn't have the title song. It just played a little bit of it in, uh, in an instrumental way and then switched to the Bond theme. And then at the end of the film, we have our title song, our, you know, From Russia With Love theme song. So it's like, we're still getting there. Like, we're still yeah. developing that formula. Maurice Bender, who was in the last movie, he did the opening credit sequence, is replaced with Robert, his name's Robert Brown John. I just think it's a silly name. <laughs> but he did the opening credit sequence to this film, which kind of sparks off the whole, you know, naked ladies in the beginning of the film. I mean, yes, they're not naked, but it's kind of reminiscent of the gypsies with the belly dancing. Scantily clad. Kind of Scantily clad. I mean, last time they were fully clothed. You know, they had long yeah. skirts and full shirts and all that. With this, it's like, again, we're making baby steps, including yeah, this was our first legitimate prologue. Yeah. The first yeah. mm -hmm. little action sequence that takes place early on to get us in the mood and then title sequence. So it's like that part of the formula is now secured. I want to um, I want to ask Nans a question. Nans, when you watched the beginning of this movie, were you shocked at first or or were you like what's going on? Again, this is uh, when, Nathan when who they... has never seen most of these movies. I wouldn't say shock, like you mentioned, it, probably more on, along the lines of like, what's going on? <laughs> like, obviously, <laughs> Bond isn't dying right now, but it was interesting to see the face rip. That was an extremely convincing uh, <laughs> prosthetic, I guess, or whatever yeah. you would call it. It did almost look like they put <laughs> more makeup on, on Bond to I, yes. make him look a little weird. Yes. Yeah. You got to wonder, yeah. though, why the mask? Like, I get that they're training him to one day kill Bond, but why have a James Bond mask? Is it like, you know, now Grant, when you run into James Bond, he's really attractive, and it might throw you off the first time you see him, so... We're going to put a real mask on this guy so that you don't immediately get a... I mean, if I saw James Bond in real life, my man crush would probably take over, and I'd, I'd probably end up being his bitch, I guess. You know, I'd be like, like, like in Austin Powers, the... Dr. Evil sent me here to kill you, but... but I find you so sexy and just make love. You are hairy like animals. Go, baby. Very good. Make love to me, monkey man. <laughs> you know, like, I, I can't kill yeah. you, James Bond. Uh, you know, but, but they're like, now that's going to happen. So we're going to train that out of you by putting a mask on this random guy mm. that you're going to murder. I think it's a case of can you look your enemy in the face once you actually see him and pull the trigger. Or to encourage... So they're training him with the face. I would say it's to encourage... Did he even target see recognition. the face? Yeah, target. Yeah. yeah. You know, throughout the entire film, he's actually protecting him for most of the movie. But to yeah. know his target... Learn to, learn to hate that face. Kill. Yeah. 